The children of three 21st century families have gone back in time to experience life in wartime South Wales. Their living life, 1944 style. I look like a chav in 1944 clothes. In this coal house, we hear from the youngsters living on Stack Square. How's the first week in 1944 been for them? I've only been here for a couple of days and they had to be there for years. You can imagine what it'd be like. Coal House, the kid's eye view. There are ten children and one teenager entering the coal house. They used to live in 2008. Now they're in 1944. They've been stripped of everything. No television, no computer games, just a radio and their imaginations. Britain's at war with the Germans. Food is scarce, school is strict. You will comply at all times, children. The toilets are outside and the loo roll isn't soft. In the Griffiths house, nine-year-old Callum and 11-year-old Kieran are in charge of two grandparents and their mum. Next door at number eight, the Paisley children are all in one bedroom, except little Lara. It's a baby bed. <laughs> who won't be sleeping in that bed. She'll be downstairs sharing with mum and dad. All the children are wearing 1940s clothes and they don't have many of them. In 1944 mining cottages, a bedroom to yourself was a luxury. Most children didn't even know such privacy existed. Space is a particular worry for the biggest coal house family, the Tranter Davises. Annie Starr, 17, Caitlin and Rosie Jane, both 11, Maisie Ray, 9, and last but not least, Tilly, she's 4. It's an all-girl family. Didn't say anything. All right. Let's now start. My claws are rubbish. I'm not impressed with my claws at all. I wanted different clothes. <laughs> so I'll just smell and be dirty and just look like rubbish the whole time I'm here. Which is all good. <laughs> all the families will be eating in the kitchen and the food is going to take a lot of getting used to. Many foods are rationed and there may not be enough to go round. There's no pizza, no ice cream, no chocolate and definitely no takeaways. Life is going to be tough. I only like certain stuff like chips and stuff for fish. And I don't think they got any of that here. So I don't know how I'm going to cope with the food. Yeah, the Paisy's first meal isn't Mum's best. It may be wartime, but some things never change. Parents go to work, and big sisters would still hog the bathroom, if there was one. Well, I want to shower already. I've only been here a day, and I want to go home and change. Oh, wow. That's good. Lovely. Let me see. Oh, it is. <laughs> Give me the bubble bath. <laughs> 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 And children still go to school. I love you. Rosie, look after Tilly. Love you. Rosie, hold her hand. In 1944, whatever the weather, children used to walk to school. The school day starts at 9 o'clock, sharp. Line up there, please. One behind the other. 
Okay. Meeting them at the door is Miss Bridal. I want you to come in quietly. Quickly, you one, please. Well done. And Mr. Jones is just as spine tingling. Good morning, children. I'm your head teacher. I'd like to welcome you here to Ascol Darovelin. Croiso. Welcome. They're taking cod liver oil and a dose of malt extract, both full of vitamins to keep them healthy. Oops. Don't duck your head in. Children's you health had never been so good. Swallow it quickly. Quickly. All off the spoon. Right. Suck. Ooh. I think that was a generous helping, Miss Bridal. That was a very generous helping, sir. Next one. Take it all off the spoon quickly. This is going to happen every day. <laughs> Would you like to wait outside now? Never seen the like. You can show these boys how to behave, can't you? And your name is Tilly? Good girl. Swallow it down quickly. Well done, Tilly. One was oil or something. And the others was like just this slimy stuff. Just like honey and some of the dirt. It was honey, I did, but I felt sick of caramel. The open will have it tomorrow. Back in class, discipline is strict. Children speak only when spoken to. And you are? Look at me. Rosie Tranta Davis, miss. Thank you. Kieran Griffiths, miss. Ewan. Ewan, and what's your last name? Uh, I don't have another name. <laughs> Maisie trying to do this mess. Maisie thought it would be really horrible and the teachers will be really horrible, but the teachers aren't. Maisie They're just really kind and nice. Even though they need to give us the malt, but they probably didn't want to. It's all been too much for four-year-old Ewan. He's back home unexpectedly. Am I reading my purse? <laughs> That's why you're all. It's because you're reading your pants, okay? He's been sent back from school because he's weed himself. Good plan. <laughs> Not beautiful. Can you like this, you one? No. Good boy. Back at school, Ewan, happy in clean trousers, faces an afternoon of reading, writing and arithmetic. The three R's. This is very serious. So please, on your own. Nine times two is eighteen. Now we're going to try our three times table. Four times three is twelve. Five times three is fifteen. It's late afternoon in Stack Square. The rain has stopped and the only baby in the village is making her own fun. School ends at four o'clock. Not soon enough for Rosie. School was scary. Because like you have to take these medicines, like cod liver eye, and you said the stuff thick. Oh, school. We've got to learn a two and three times table. And um, practice our shillings and um, money. The children have few toys, so the rabbits and pigs make great entertainment. But food was scarce in 1944, and pets often ended up on the dinner table. You don't oh, need no. rabbit! <laughs> Any food? Um, it's abnormal! <laughs> you let the pigs off! <laughs> <laughs> Two new children have arrived from Cardiff to live in Stack Square. Caleb and his sister Kia will be safer here. Cities were a more dangerous place to live during the war because they were a target for German air raids. Um, oh, right, OK. That's lovely. Move the chair. Move the chair. Right, OK, we've got um, two double beds in here. Right. So we've got what we had last night was Annie and Rosie... No, Rosie and Caitlin in one. And Annie and Rosie could come in here and Caitlin and Maisie could go in right. there. Because Tilly's in with us downstairs. Right. So is that okay if yes. you two sleep in the same bed? Yes. yes. Now this is Kia. Kia. And you are? Annie Star. Annie Star. Annie Star. And Caleb. Yep. Hello. Caitlin. Hello. Hiya. Hello. Maisie. 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 This is kind of a squash. It's like really small compared to my real house, which is massive. Um, I like it, to be honest, because I like small and cosy and warm. 
But uh, yep, I got a uh, key with Callum next door, and I got uh, my sister and all the girls that I'm living with, so it's, it's kind of good. Caleb and Kia have got to fit in quickly and make friends, which won't be a problem with the Cole House kids. And I like to see the chickens because I've never been like that close to one. It's wicked. The pigs snort all the time and it's just like... Fun. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have fun here with us. And we're only next door over there, alright? So if you want to come and play with the boys any time. If there's too much going on in the girls' house, you come into the boys, alright? <laughs> with extra mouths to feed, tea with the Tranter Davis family is late and not going down well. It's kind of runny and I just, just don't like it. It's a bit smoky and everything. It's just not like it. And two doors down at the Paisy house, the food isn't much better. At the Griffiths, with no television to watch, Kieran and Callum are having a quiet evening in with their mum and grandparents. <laughs> the sound of the air raid siren was a warning that German planes were nearby. The Cole House families dive for cover. During the war, over a thousand men, women and children were killed in the air raids in Wales. By 1944, with the war nearly won, the air raid warnings were false alarms. But it was better safe than sorry. Are they all clear? Perhaps they're all clear. Let's have you back out, you know. Be careful with this step. Are you okay? Yes. Make yourself back to your home in an orderly fashion. Go and have a nice warm now. Don't you worry about anything. I'm quite scared because it's all pitch black and you could hear the air raid siren uh, no matter where you were, it's really loud. When you went into the air raid shelter it made you feel like a shell and like you just squidged up into a little ball, like a snail kind of thing. <laughs> then we would have been a lot more scared, we would have like been petrified yeah. and <laughs> I think knowing that it was actually happening and it was planes like dropping bombs above us and everything, I think we would all have been quite upset and emotional about all it. Next morning, and after last night's air raid warning, everyone is tired. Could I try a little bit? Yeah. Okay. But it's hot. How are you doing, Tilly? You all right? No. No. Are you serious? Yeah. Do I like it at all? I think I was snoring, though. I've been told. Uh, <laughs> you are talking in your sleep. Oh I tried everything. I put all the quilts over my ears, but I still could hear him. Because like, and I could hear everybody else snoring as well. So I like put all blankets all over my head, and I could still hear them snoring. And I was like, oh, I can get to sleep. It's horrible. It's Caleb and Kia's first day at school, and they're in for a shock. Good. Here we have two. We have two. Caleb can't take the cod liver oil. Swallow it down very quickly. Down in one, sir. Take it right off the spoon. Swallow it. Swallow it, child. Swallow it. Stand in line. Just swallow it down quickly. Next one, Kieran. Very quickly. Well done. Have we better inspect the hands, Miss Bridle? I have done that, sir. I think we need to inspect them again, Miss Bridle. Caleb's been spotted spitting out his mouthful. Yeah. Extra helping, I think, Miss Bridle. I think so, sir. Straight down, Straight sir. Down. Straight down. Otherwise, you won't be big and strong. Wipe it with your hand, sir. Is it gone? Yep. Right. Pardon, sir. Excuse me. Yes, miss. Thank you. Sorry, sir. Today, we are going to practice putting on our gas mask. The gas mask drill was essential to protect against gas attacks. And breathe normally. You're breathing. Let's see that little up and down. And children had to know how to put on their masks without panicking. Are we making silly noises? Yes. OK. By lunchtime, they're hungry and could eat almost anything. Right. 
And by the afternoon, Ewan shows he's learning fast. Do I need the toilet? Go then quickly. Well done. Quickly! Right. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. Cheerio! Here I go on my way. Back in Stack Square, teenager Annie's having a bad hair day. I've attempted to wash my hair with soap and I smell like an old woman. <laughs> Seeing as I wash my hair at least once every day at home, coming here and not being able to wash my hair for two days seemed to like <laughs> make my hair just really disgustingly dirty. And then the coal and the fire, it just doesn't help. And now I've got flies around my hair, so I think my hair might be too smelly. But I'm sure they didn't wash their hair every day. They must have stank. Everyone just must have stank. It's foul. It's horrible. If there was a competition to be the best behaved kid, it will probably be... Everyone. We're half naughty, half good. I'm half. So I'm a devil good. and I'm also an angel. So half a thingy, a point of a horn, horn. And, and half a halo. Nice. Everyone's got them. I, I don't know if you can see them glowing. Seems to be lack of behaviour. Everyone just seems to be going mad. All the children just seem to be getting wound up by each other and then winding the animals up and then winding us up by winding the animals up. And so everyone's going to be stressed out to think. Boom, banana, boom, boom, banana, go bananas! It's not going to be long before I go mad. <laughs> I think I'll keep calm for the next hour or two, <laughs> maybe. At number eight, the Paisley family are struggling to help Isabel with her homework on poet John Keats. John Blake? Oh, who? Cool. John Blake. No, um, no. James Blake. No, it's an old person. He died um, 120 something years ago. Was he a poet? Not John Dunn. Yes. And at number six, they're running late for their evening's entertainment. We've got a band of hope. Santa Claus. It's kind of been seven o'clock. I think Band of Hope is singing and playing games in church, like Sunday school. It is. They've already told her all this. Maisie's in for a terrible surprise. Band of Hope is not fun and games. Tonight's meeting is about the dangers of drink. There are many, many temptations, but there is one that is worse than all the others intoxicating liquors you will be learning this pledge i promise here by grace divine to drink no spirits ale or wine nor will i buy or sell or give strong drink to others while i live next morning the Paisy children are still tired from the night before. Everyone is late getting up. It's about to have a knock-on effect at school. Please be so kind as to collect the lunch money now. Okay. Can I have your lunch, thank you? You're paying for five. And that's for you. You, you. Right, lovely, thank you. We forgot our dinner money. You forgot your dinner money? Did I hear right? You did, I'm afraid. Um, our three little ones here have not brought their lunch money, I'm afraid. Could any of you give me any reasons why you failed to bring money this morning? We got up a bit late because we, um, we went to, we got into bed late because there was a Sunday school. Well, I'm very pleased that you went to Sunday school. However, your mother and father should have made sure you got up on time. Now, without money, no lunch. No long children, please. Mr. Jones gave us a letter to give to our parents for his disappointment. We forgot the dinner money! Oh, no! <laughs> but the Paisley children really don't seem that bothered. I am writing to express my disappointment. I got children came to school today without their lunch money. The money's been sitting on the dresser all morning. Did you say I was in bed? Just say to the teacher that you have to prize the sixpence out of my sleeping hand. No! Back at school.
school, Isabel, Griff and Ewan are catching up on their lessons. During the afternoon, four boys arrive in the square. They are Jack, Rory, Chaz and Charlie. And they're certainly going to be the centre of attention for the next few days. Right, boys. You've met the neighbour of hell. Meet your mother. Rose Griffiths is their full-time neighbour, part-time nag and sometime nana, whether they want her or not. The lads are known as Bevin boys and have been sent by the government to work in the coal mines. It's a lot better than I was expecting, if I'm honest. I was expecting something that's pretty much falling apart. Trained miners had gone to the war to fight. These raw recruits were their replacement. The space isn't exactly... It's quite cosy though, isn't it? It's cosy. Yeah. And as far as your rations, be careful, boys, because maybe you think that you've got plenty there, but you may have a surprise. Okay. I'm quite happy with how much food we've got. I think that can last us for about a couple of weeks, I reckon. <laughs> Hopefully get tea on the go, so I'm starving. Who's cooking? Okay, what are we having? The four Bevin boys will be living together and working in the coal mine. Oh, they're in for a culture shop. <laughs> the children have gone straight from school to the allotments. In time for a wildlife lesson from Griff Paisy. I found those caterpillars and those these caterpillars. I don't know if I'm allowed to keep them or not. And I used to have some, just it turned into a moth and it flew off. Big pull. Hey, right, shake. Shake, shake all the soil off. Give him a good shake. There's a fly on your camera. <laughs> you get it off? OK. <laughs> Word has spread about the new arrivals. Do you guys name the pigs? Yeah. Oh, still an adult. Well, we've got names from as well. We've got ones called Pork and one's called Chop. Let's get our chocolate. So it says there. You got chocolate. Give us some chocolate. Give us some chocolate. Give us chocolate. We've only got small. I'm glad there's more boys because like there's only Kieran and Callum and the rest of them. Caleb can finally show off his sporting skills. We do bullets. No, we just tire them out. They'll have a good sleep. <laughs> but there's someone on the square who's keeping her distance. I know this boy's here. That's why I'm stood over here and not going anywhere near the house yet. Because looking like a nana and smelling like a nana isn't really going to get anywhere, is it? <laughs> I'm not going over there. <laughs> I, I'm going to go round and go home. <laughs> right, I'm going now. There are boys now. One's called Jack, one's called... Tav. Chaz. Tav. Chaz. Tav. OK, Chaz. And these two other ones, which I don't have a clue. And Jack was called... Jack Jr. Jack Jr. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so we've got Jack and Chaz. Chaz, yeah. And these two other boys. It's Chaz, we don't know who they are. No. no. Maybe we should go and ask and come back later. Oh, no, I don't want to. No, only me either. And over at the boys' house, there's trouble brewing. You're not supposed to open the top one, are you? What's that? Fire's um, going out at the moment. I don't know whether I should come in. Right, you would. <laughs> the boys won't be earning much, and they're not happy having to pay for Rose's help. Are you thinking of sacking me? Uh, no, we'll change your yeah. mind now. I might put my rates up. In fact, now that I am here, yeah, maybe it's about time uh, that I had my money now too. It's seven shillings, please, boys. And my calculation is one and nine each. I don't understand. That's all I'm telling you is you it's one and nine the... each. Yeah, Regardless each, how you sort But it them. will be a shilling a day. That's a from... shilling a day. Yeah. So if we had you for the week instead of the weekend, it would change, and then there'd be just five shillings for the week. No, I want seven shillings the first week, and then we'll take it from there. OK. So you got me for one week? Right. Then we can Give decide either way. It's not just your choice, remember. I may not decide to come back. Don't respect the chair. <laughs> I'm not asking you for one. You're going to work this out or do you want to go? Yeah, I haven't spoke to any of them. 
It makes no difference to me other than they're loud at the moment until they're really tired and they need to sleep more. But I think they'll have a shock in a bit. Give it a few days, they'll be crying. <laughs> they, they are in for they a will. shock, aren't they? They'll they're so full bits. of partying. <laughs> I think they'll have a little bit of a shock when they see the colour of, of the men coming back now. I think, I think give will. it two days and they'll be completely different. They'll be mad like us. <laughs> <laughs> Next morning, the Bevin boys get the rude awakening Annie predicted. They're being tested to the limit to prepare them for the hard work in the mines. I Come suggest on. for you, Mel! No time to smile, boy! Move! Move up! Move! I'm struggling, and I am fit. But I am struggling this hard. I'm right on your tail! Don't let me catch you up! Woo! I would so rather be in the coal mines than doing this. The children have survived their first week in the coal house. They've made friends and played hard. So are our time travellers really missing anything about 2008? I'm not really craving chocolate. I'd, I'd, I'd be able to go without chocolate. But there is one special request from 1944. We want some loo paper, proper loo paper. About Soft. 